Welcome into the Godly Young Men podcast. This is episode 73. We are super excited for you joining us once again. You know, Joe and I were just talking. We are heading into July here shortly, and we we're talking about the fact that July is kind of an underrated, boring month of the year. There's usually, it really is. There's usually not a lot that goes on in July. I mean, sports are dead. Not all the yeah, everything's taking place. Right, exactly. The NBA baseball. NBA's over. NFL is not even close to starting yet. NHL's I guess, over. I guess you do have baseball, right? Or is there baseball? I don't even know. There is baseball. Okay, I don't even keep up with the baseball calendar. That's when the ESPYS is because there's nothing in the after right, the All-Star right. Break. Like, but like boring. vacations aren't really going on a ton in July. It's hot as anything. It's really so. hot. Yeah. So, um, hopefully, you've got a lot of Godly Men podcast content to catch up there on. There you if go. You, maybe if you're there behind, you that you can spend your July doing. But um, we got a great episode today. We're talking about people, certain people to avoid. Certain types of people to avoid, and I think – so this is really based – I'm going to let Joe intro, intro, uh, introduce this here in just a second, but a lot of this is based in First Corinthians 15, 33. Paul, and then you can go to Psalm 1, make it very clear that there are certain types of people we have to avoid. Yeah. Um, and so obviously there's kind of the obvious like really, really sinful people you want to stay away from. We're going to get into maybe some more of the more subtle – um, types of people that you need to stay away from. Um, and so, Joe, I'll let you kind of introduce this. This sure. is your outline. It's looking really good. I'm excited about it. But about the certain types of people that we're, we're going to encourage godly young men to avoid. Yeah, because on this podcast, we do talk a lot about the guys you're supposed to surround yourself with. We talk about accountability partners. We talk about close friends. We talk about mentors. We've talked a lot about getting your group of guys. Like, guys need to have a pack. They need to have, you know, a group, I would say, that really pushes them to be better. We've talked a lot about that, so that's that's a fantastic thing. To the flip side, though, we have to be careful with those on the negative end of things because if we are going to surround ourselves by positive influences, we can negate all of the positivity by hanging around some really bad characters. And so we put together, as, as Will said, this is based in 1 Corinthians 15.33 of Bad Company Corrupts Good Morals. We've put together seven different types of kind of bad company, I guess you could say, that could corrupt potentially good morals, especially as we're striving to be godly. Can we address man. something real quick? Sure. What about all the people who are going to say, Joe, man, Will, you guys are being really judgmental. Aren't you guys, aren't you guys, uh, judge for, not yeah. that you be not judged, right? <laughs> isn't, isn't that what Jesus says? I would just, how would we answer that? Well, I would say in that context of Matthew 7 that they always quote, he also says, don't cast your pearls before swine, meaning you have to know who the swine are, uh, so as to not cast your pearls before them. So there is a level of judgment. Jesus is not saying don't ever judge. Uh, I think you can easily go to, to Matthew 7, actually, and make a case as to who you should be avoiding, because at the end, he says, you'll know them by their fruits, yeah. right? And so at the end of chapter 7, How do you know what their fruits are? Guess what you, you got to do? You exactly. Gotta you got to judge. You, you and I make judgments every single day. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the real... You know, buzzword is is judge these days, and like, oh, you know, don't judge, don't judge. Everybody judges every single day. Bad but, company corrupts good morals, and what they what mean is don't condemn. Is. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's kind of what exactly. they mean. But and you don't know where people are. I don't have to know where people are to know how much they can affect me and how much they can affect my kids. Like, I got you've got Jackson. I've got uh, I've got you know three boys at this point. I'm going to be thinking quite a bit about who they're, who I allow them to be around, who their friends are and their influences are. Any good parent is going to do this. Why would we not do this for ourselves? If I do it for my son and say, don't hang around that knucklehead. You know, he's he's going to cause you to go down a bad path. My parents had the same conversations with me. We would look at that and go, that's good parenting. You're supposed to keep your kids away from riffraff. But if we do it, then we're judgmental, right? No, we're not going to abide by that. Yes, there's a certain judgment call we're going to make on this. And if you look at us as judgmental jerks, okay, podcast isn't for you, I suppose. You're judging us uh, then. If yeah. that's the case. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> wow, that is so judgmental of you. That is, that is so mean. Uh, and we're offended and hurt. No. Um, but we realize that this is a, this may be a little harsh in some of these. Yes, and I, there is a delicate balance that you don't want to swing too far to the other side of like, always looking for the negative in people of like, Correct. man, I'm sure they've got this wrong with them or like, this is a really great guy, but man, he's got this one character fl- character flaw. Right. So I just can't be around this person. You've got to, again, you don't want to swing too far to, to the other side where you're always looking for negative in people or always looking at the negative in somebody. At the same time, we are called to use righteous judgment. We're encouraged to have sure. discernment, especially as godly young men on who we hang out with. And so that's kind of the basis for this. Why episode. is a serpent innocent as doves is what we're going to say with this. Um, more, I'm going to say this right off the bat with the seven types of people to avoid. These are, 
basically the the character defining qualities is, is what we're talking about. When you think about a friend, when I think about Will, I think of good friend or I think a hard worker. I think of things that define Will. That doesn't make you Jesus. It doesn't make you perfect. But by and large, when I go to define you, it is by a very positive thing. Therefore, You're not just thinking about one aspect of correct, it. Right, yeah. Correct. Correct. Like whatever that negative may be, I don't know. But like whatever the negative may be, I'm not looking at Will as that negative. Uh, again, you're not perfect, but whatever that is. Yeah. So same with me, same with, with others. I would hope that when people think of me, they're not thinking of the negative aspects. That doesn't make me perfect. I absolutely have negative aspects. That's what we're talking about here is when you think of this guy, we're going to have one like Eddie Haskell, which probably means nothing to the godly young man. Um, uh, it, to be honest, it would have been nothing to me if you hadn't explained who that was. Yeah, I'll, so. <laughs> I'll explain in a second. But like when you think of this guy, that's what you think of. That's what we're talking about. We're going to get right into this on the seven types. I'll, I'll start with the first one just because I don't want to spend much time on this. It's the bad boy. Pretty simple. Um, again, we don't need to spend a ton of time on this because it's very obvious. And, and we start with this just to say, avoid the bad boy. Avoid the guy that's smoking behind the school, you know, like the classic things that you see. But just a guy that's a bad apple. Like he's he's not a good character. Encourages you to do immoral things. Correct. He's yeah. watching porn. He's showing you porn. Things like that. Like clearly, don't hang out with the bad boy who is. And the girls may love him because girls actually are drawn toward that, and it may cause you to go, "Wow, if I hang around him, maybe there's girls. Maybe there's this. There's that. There's reasons people hang around the bad kid, and a lot of times it's because they're self assured and they're very confident." People are drawn. People with low confidence are drawn to those with high confidence. So if the kid is very assured in the bad stuff he's Which doing, Which most of the time they act like they are. Correct. Yeah, even if they're not. Even if they're not. But a lot of times they've been left to their own devices. Their parents aren't paying attention. They're very cocky and self assured. And if you don't have that self confidence enough to go, that's stupid, and to call that out, I'm not doing that. That's a bad thing. That's against God. Then you may find yourself drifting toward the bad boy because he gives, he projects the confidence you don't have. So just be careful of that. Yeah, yeah. I want to go and get us into the second go one. For it. Like you said, no one spend time on the bad bad boy one. It's pretty obvious. The second type of person to avoid is kind of the the two faced guy. Um, the sneak is another way that you put it. Um, you can explain who Eddie Haskell is, Joe, because that doesn't doesn't ring a bell to me. <laughs> Basically, the the idea of this is the guy who's just kind of mischievous he's kind, yeah. of, kind of cunning he, he's kind of behind the scenes doing things he shouldn't but out in front he's mr you know mr uh smiling at everybody and just seems like a really great kid but when nobody's looking or when maybe the adults aren't looking he's kind of rotten and kind of doing things he shouldn't he's really kind of sneaky and kind of two-timing again kind of hard to define what we're talking about but you know it when you see it Eddie Haskell, if you've ever seen Leave it to Beaver, most people have not probably. Was that on in the 1800s? Or? 1700s, I think. Yeah, exactly. yeah. George Washington <laughs> loved that show, yeah. I think it was in black and white, actually, <laughs> so that tells you it's really, really old, way before my time. But on Leave it to Beaver, go YouTube it if you haven't seen it or have your parents explain it to you. Eddie Haskell is the friend of, of the Beaver's, uh, you know, brother, and... The whole point is, to the parents, he's just the nicest kid. I love that little Eddie. He's great. Super polite. Super polite. You know, shaking hands, good eye contact. Oh, wow. What a great guy. And then behind the scenes, he's a train wreck. He's getting the kids <laughs> to do all sorts of stuff. Like, he's a really bad example. But none of the parents see this. Every adult thinks he is just, like, the gold standard here. That's what we're talking about. And that's that two-faced, like, you want to avoid that guy where as soon as the, the door is closed on the parents or on the adults in the room, he becomes something completely different. Don't avoid him. Avoid him. Don't hang around him because if he's willing to do it, he knows how to play the games. He will get you just in as much trouble. And look, at some point, the jig's up. Like, it will, the music stops and it goes, the record scratch. You can't keep that up forever. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And the parents go, I'm sorry, what? That will come out at some point, especially if it's you and you fall into it. Avoid the two-faced. All right, I'm going to get us in the next one. Go for so it. So Joe put this on here. Um, but, you know, I, of course, back it. The third type of person to avoid is the moron. That's this kind is of, the judgmental, you can't say that. We did. We just did. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, don't hang around. You know, this is not my er phrase original me. Don't hang around stupid people because stupid, pe stupid people get you killed. Or life's hard. It's a lot harder if you're stupid. Again, not original to me. This is different than the bad boy in the sense that the bad boy is malicious and is just, yep. you know, again, he, there's intention behind doing things that he shouldn't. The moron or maybe the stupid person just might not have any malicious intent, but just kind of does dumb stuff a lot of times. And this is kind of a, a trope with teenagers of like, oh, it's just, you know, what they do, just teenage boys being teenage boys. But it is true that if you hang around people who do really, really dumb things or, you know, do really dumb pranks or say dumb, stupid things, whatever, guess what you're probably going to kind of lend yourself to doing? A lot of the same stuff. And so I don't know if you want to elaborate on that, Joe, but yeah, don't hang around 
stupid people. <laughs> it's kind of the, the best way we can put that. It's great to have fun, no doubt. Uh, what I mean by this, though, when I put this down, yes, it sounds harsh. Yes, it sounds like, can you really call him that? You shouldn't call anybody that. That's not very Christian to call people that. But some people are. Some people are. We know We know the kids that are like making prank phone calls at, at uh, 2 in the morning and waking church members up and things like We know the kids that do that, and they think it's hilarious. You know, and, the, and like the four-wheeling uh, where they're going off-road and not wearing seatbelts and just kind of getting into mischief and, and doing like dumb stuff. You know, they're trespassing on people's, pro- uh, people's property. And it's not necessarily the bad boy who's out graffitiing the town per se. Or smoking weed or something. Or smoking yeah. weed or something like really bad, but it's just dumb stuff. And yeah, yeah I had that on here because my dad told us that all the time growing up. Stupid people will get you killed. I must have heard that like a thousand <laughs> times growing up, but it's it was so true. Imprinted on your brain. Oh yeah, yes. it was so true. And I remember I had two friends and they ended up being great kids, um, but they were not the fan, most fantastic um, influences growing up. And I remember getting in huge trouble because they told me, don't go near, there's a there's a giant hole at the church, they're digging the foundation for this brand new building, and this is a really deep hole, like, if I had fallen in, it would have been really bad. Parents said, don't go anywhere near, and here I go, following, the, I didn't avoid the people that were kind of doing stupid stuff around there, and got right next to the caution tape, kind of the line, where it is, and my parents busted me, and um, it did not go well, but I remember that being a turning point in my life of, like, you become a leader. Stop following. Stop. Like, you need to avoid people that are going to get you into stupid situations. And here's where dad comes in. Stupid people will get you killed. And it could have. Because if I had fallen in as we were messing around near that, I knew I shouldn't have done it. I would have broken something or it could have been, like, a lot yeah. worse. Um, stupid people get you killed. Just make sure you're not hanging around the moron who's really encouraging you to do dumb stuff. Your life matters. Take it seriously. And... Obviously, if it's illegal, but even if it's risky, even if it's something that's going to end you in the hospital or that's going to cause your parents to have a heart attack, don't do that. Just don't do that. Avoid those people. So the next one. That's, Sorry, we'll I keep. See. No, no, <laughs> I you're, keep good. Taking, you're good. We let got you do it. Here, I'm going to get us in the next one. Go for because it. Because yeah. I want you to kind of get into this. And that is the gossiper. The gossiper. What I mean by that, and I'll hand it off to yeah, you, is just the person who's always talking bad about other people, who is always like he's working at an angle or whatever it is, and it's always surrounding the negative side of other people. We see this a lot more with women, just because in the Bible, you could say that's sexist, but the Bible calls that out as well. That is traditionally a woman thing to gossip. But we do see this, especially with young guys, where they can just talk bad about everybody and it's a way to make themselves feel better. Yeah, I was going to say that as well, as you typically see this more as a problem with girls. But guys can fall victim of this as well, of like putting other guys down because it makes them feel better or, you know, constantly talking about the latest, you know, whatever it is, story with the high schoolers or with your youth group or whatever. And that is something that you kind of have to watch yourself because it is fun sometimes to yep. talk about that kind of stuff. It is fun. Man, did you hear this? Like, you know, let me get everybody's thoughts on it. And so, you know, there are certain people who, and this is to Joe's point a second ago when he said, is this their defining trait? Is this their defining right. characteristic? Like, if you have a friend who, man, sometimes they, they'll tell you a story about somebody. That's not really what we're talking about. Like every now and then they'll do that. We're talking about the person who, man, every time you get together with them, it's just a gossip fest. Yeah. Every time that you see them, it's like, man, I got to tell you this about this person. Yep. And can you believe this person did this dumb thing? And it's the defining aspect of their character, of, the, of their character, of their person. Like, again, you think of them and you think gossip or talks about other people. That's the type of person we're talking about avoiding. And so um, you've got on here, Joe, the idea of like low IQ people talk about people. Like yeah. if, if you, if you're on the lower end of IQ, you talk about people. If you're on the middle end of IQ, you talk about events. And if you're on the high, really high IQ level, you talk about ideas and creativity and that kind of thing. And so what is this? Number four is the gossip person. Like the, the person who perpetually is talking about other people and, and talking down about people probably want to stay away from that. You want to get us into the next one? Sure. Yeah. And that's just the sloth. We talk, we we beat a dead horse on this one, but it's the guy who all he wants to do is play video games. He wants to stay yeah. in his parents' basement and do nothing. Or the kid that every time you ask him to go play football, like, no, I'm good. I just, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather watch TikTok or whatever it is. Like the lazy guy, we'll call him the sloth, but just the lazy guy who doesn't really have a whole lot of drive. I'm not, when we say avoid, that doesn't mean you're never going to be around these people. It means making them your BFF, you know, your best friend. Probably not because you'll find yourself sliding into his lifestyle it's infectious exactly if he's not coming up to yours to meet you where you are he doesn't want to go to the gym and he doesn't want to play sports and he doesn't want to do Bible studies and he didn't want to do all the all the you know great stuff godly men we talk about 
No, he just kind of wants to be lazy and stay down here. This goes to what we were talking about last time with mediocrity. I would kind of put these two things together of the lazy, mediocre, he's okay with just kind of accepting mediocrity. You're going to want to avoid somebody like that. And that was one of our points in the last episode, if you listen, is like, don't necessarily hang out, hang out with those kind of people. Let me get into the next one because yeah, I don't ahead. have a ton to add there. Again, that sloth mentality can just be so infectious in a negative way of like, oh, you don't want to go play football? All right, I guess we can just sit here and, and do whatever, you know, watch yeah. YouTube together or whatever it is. But number six would be one that I actually added to the outline, and that is the perpetual flirt, the girl crazy guy. Um, a lot of a lot of you probably, if you're listening or watching, you know of somebody like this. Um, again, you can probably think of him on the spot of the guy who might always be talking about girls, always flirting with girls, always chatting girls up, always Snapchatting them. We've talked about virtual promiscuity before, but it's just the guy that his, his teenage life revolves around what girls he talking to, what girls he flirting with, uh, who's he Snapchatting all these things. It's like in, in, in some ways, like you thinking about girls in high school is obviously that's just going to, that, that's going to be what you do. You know, you're going to be thinking about it a lot. You're going to be maybe trying to talk to girls or whatever. That's one thing. Again, it's the, is this his defining characteristic? If when you think of him, you think, ah, girl, crazy guy, that's the type of person where we are encouraging you to avoid because we've also made the point that as inevitable as it is that you're going to think about girls in high school, thinking about dating and thinking about marriage, you should probably hold off on. If you're around the girl crazy guy all the time, he's probably going to have no restraints on any kind of, again, dating or, you know, maybe thinking about things he shouldn't think about. And so you just, you want to stay away from that kind of person. A lot of times he pulls you into that orbit, yeah. right? And you, you become each other's wingman or whatever. Correct. Yeah. And, okay, let's say your parents are saying you need to wait till 18, which I would say is very smart, at least, um, before you're entering into any sort of relationship he's 15, 16 years old, but man, he's a player. Like he's, he's got all the girls, he's got their numbers, whatever it is. He can pull you into that and make it either feel like you're completely on the outcast and you're a weirdo or even worse, you kind of rebel and you end up falling into that lifestyle of like chat of girls and who can you get with and, and the back and forth. Like that's not what godly young men do is flirt with all the girls that you had done the virtual promiscuity, which is just a, a great, a great way of expressing this. But this is also just, again, be careful Avoid these people because once you get in their orbit and how they operate, it's so easy to fall prey to it. This is why, going back to 1 Corinthians 15, 33, bad company corrupts good morals. Say, well, it's the same reason why people talk about going to public school. You can be the light in the school. You can be the light. How often does that work out? Right. Most of the time, the light is snuffed out and you become just like everybody else because there's so much pressure. When it comes to girls, there's a ton of pressure while you're around this guy to either look like the the loser who doesn't have any girls and doesn't really want the girl, or to fall right into uh, you know right in line with it. It's very difficult to have a third option in that. That's why it's best to just avoid them. Will go ahead and get us into the last one. Yeah, and I'll let you elaborate on it. Number seven would be, as far as types of people to avoid is just the boundary pusher, the guy who kind of knows where the boundaries are, know what he's not supposed to do, and doesn't like dramatically overstep the line. Just pushes the boundaries a little bit. Just maybe says a word here and there that he knows he shouldn't. Or watches, you know, a show or a movie that has got one too many cuss words. Or, you know, got a scene that he knows he probably shouldn't watch. He's not watching porn. He's not doing anything major. But right. he's just kind of pushing the boundaries a little bit. And again, Joe, maybe you can speak a little bit better to this. But it's the idea of he's not trying to be more like Christ. He's not trying to abstain from certain things. He's just pushing the boundaries maybe with his girlfriend or pushing the boundaries here and they're trying to be edgy, whatever it is, that is also infectious in a negative way. Like, oh, if he can get away with that, I guess I can get away with that. Let me push the boundaries here. I know I can't go to go to third base, but maybe I can try to, you know, lead off second base a little bit and see how close I can get. Again, you know it when you see it. Don't hang around the boundary pusher. That's exactly it. I was thinking the guy on Instagram, well, he's not looking at porn, but he's following Kim Kardashian or whatever. Like, not real smart. He is very much pushing the boundary. He doesn't cuss a ton, but occasionally he lets a cuss word slip out. Well, who's to say, right? He doesn't watch Fifty Shades of Grey, but he does watch, you know, I probably should have thought of the movie, but like fill in the blank, not not quite so bad movie. Right. Yeah. Right, exactly. You know, I don't know. A lot of people ended up watching, which is surprising. Like, I don't know why this always comes to mind, maybe because it's been a while, but Suicide Squad, Harley Quinn, things like that, those movies where it's all in the, oh, it's a... a comic books and such, you can get some that are really raunchy, that are really not clean, but because, well, it all fits in, that's not good either, right? Deadpool um, is one of those. Deadpool is, really is one of yeah. those. It's like, 
and it just pushes the boundaries a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further. The reason you avoid this person is if they have a proclivity for pushing the boundaries, where does it end? Where does it stop? How far are they going to push this boundary before, oh, whoops, we pushed it a little too far, and now you're into real trouble. You thought you could maybe stop at second base. Mm, you went to third base, right? And that's not good. Uh, you know, when it, when it comes to your girlfriend, protecting her, things like that, it's not good to push the boundary, push the boundary, push the boundary, because you may not have the self-control to stop. These people will eventually, like bad company corrupts good morals, it rubs off on you to the point that, you end up being the boundary pusher and you end up pushing back on your parents and maybe being more on the rebellious end of things of like, well, why can't we? And, and you know, you guys are just so, so harsh and you guys just don't allow me to do anything. Why? Because you're pushing boundaries and when they have the firm boundary, which is what a parent is supposed to do, you don't like it. If you're hanging around this, a lot of times that again will begin to rub off on you and you find yourself being the rebellious kid, the rebellious teenager who just hates his parents because they, they hold strict boundaries. They're supposed to. They're your parents. You should be able to have a dialogue with them, but if you're pushing the boundaries constantly, take a step back. Try to figure out why you're pushing the boundary and make sure that you don't have anybody that is helping you in pushing that boundary. Avoid those people. I'll recap real quick, and I got one more thing to say, and I'll let Joe wrap us up. So we have the seven types of people to avoid. The bad boy, the two-faced guy, the moron, the gossip, the sloth, the perpetual flirt, and then the boundary pusher. The last thing that I'll say is just to kind of go back to Psalm 1. I brought it up earlier, where he says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, doesn't stand in the paths of sinners, doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful. Doesn't go anywhere close to him. Yep. Doesn't even go down the path. Stays as far away as he can. Uh, he talks about his, you know, he meditates on the law of the Lord day and night. He's like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He's not going to be moved. Why? Because he stays away from those types of people. And you might think, well, Will, Psalm 1 is talking about sinners and, and, you know, really, really, really bad people, the ungodly, wicked. I mean, maybe with the exception of the bad boy, none of these other people are, are, are really quite that bad. The problem and why we're telling you to avoid these types of people is because they very well can lead you to the ungodly, to, um, you know, the, the wicked, the sinful, you might look at it and go, okay, being, you know, just being really dumb is not necessarily, not necessarily sinful, or maybe, uh, being a perpetual flirt, or maybe, maybe, um, being kind of two-faced, you know, okay, that's bad, but it's not that bad. First of all, a lot of that is that bad, being two-faced, or, you know, especially, you know, being a gossip, or even being lazy, but it very well can lead you to where you have a disregard for God, disregard for authority, disregard for obedience to your parents, disregard for whatever. And so that's what I would say is blessed is the man, once again, according to the psalmist, who doesn't even go near those types of people, doesn't walk down that path, doesn't sit, doesn't stand anywhere near those people. And so that that was really, again, the basis for this episode and why we would encourage you, these are the types of people to stay away from. Absolutely. We didn't, it's hitting me now as I put this outline together, we didn't even get into the women to avoid. Uh, read the book of Proverbs for that one. Yeah, there so you go. Proverbs is there for you uh, just to say, avoid the woman who's going to entice you into certain things and who's going to... Yeah, basically push boundaries. Um, that goes to, to the female side as well. But yeah, this all came about. My brother actually had suggested this outline of maybe some people to avoid, things like that. We, once again, to come back around to what Will was talking about, this can sound judgmental. This can sound like, wow, even the moron. You look at it and go, can you really call people that? I wouldn't. Uh, we need to be careful on calling people names for sure. But I also think we can call out like that is moronic. That is very stupid behavior. And there are smart people that can do stupid things. So in that situation, you know, I want to I want to clarify that. But we don't want to back off on any of these really to say you need to protect yourself as much as possible. Protect yourself from these people because as much as we're pushing you to seek really good relationships, we're also saying you need to avoid the bad relationships because as I said at the beginning, those two can cancel out one another. You've got a great mentor who's really helping you, but you got a friend who's pulling you down toward hell. You know, toward a really bad spot in life. Don't allow for those things. You need to protect yourself more than anything. Protect your time. Protect your innocence to a certain degree. Um, protect your holiness and your spirituality and, and your sanctification processes. You're being a better Christian and a godly young man. Anybody who's taking you away from the godly part, you need to cut out of your life. Well, we'll give them a chance. Maybe they'll come around. You can. They can come around when they're ready. You cut them out of their life. If they change, maybe give them a second chance later. You don't want to stick around and wait for them to have this this epiphany that they're going to be better. I would take more of a hardline stance of don't hang around this person. Avoid them. Bad company corrupts good morals. Well, what if they become good company? Not likely. Not likely. We need to just let it be as it is. And if they become good company again, they can come into your life later. 
avoid these people. So I, I know I'm I'm going on and on, but that's that's a great way to wrap. That that's yeah. that's really good. I mean, that's exactly what I was what I would say as well. Again, you've got the judgmental portion. You've got the you know people are going to call you judgmental. That is, you need to have discernment. You need to be mindful of of wh- what impact people are having on you because the, most of the time people are either pushing you towards the boundaries or they're pushing you closer towards God. And so, um, yeah, I should not have you know added on to Joe's no, excellent great. way to wrap. Point. But we are going to stop right there. This has been episode seventy three of the Godly Young Men podcast. We hope you're enjoying your summer. We'll be back next week for episode seventy four of the Godly Young Men podcast. Thank you for watching. 